Well, let the record show that all members are present with the exception of Mr. Steele. Uh, Town Manager Michael Units is here with us also. Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I should note that today is Thursday, July 13th, by the way. Okay, on the West <coughs> permits, we have an application of Bonnie Yerkovitz for a one-day all-alcohol license to be utilized at the Everett Leonard Park on Saturday, September 2nd, 2017, from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. for a private party. <clears throat> Everyone has a copy of the, rec the uh, application in their file? Mm -hmm. It has been signed off by the uh, like, oh, police department. And I'm not sure what the other one is, but sign offs are here. Um, private party, less than 100 people. And it seems like everything's in order. So. The other signatures, the deputy fire chief. Is that who it is? Okay. So, any questions? No. And then the chair intended motion to approve the application of Bonnie Yerkovich for a one day all alcohol license. Utilized at the Everett Leonard Park on Saturday, September 2nd, 2017, from 7 p.m. to 11 <coughs> p.m. for a private party. So moved. Second. Motion a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Unanimous. Thank you. Next, we have an application by Jen Forshe for a <coughs> one day beer and wine license to be utilized at the Everett Leonard Park on Sunday, August 20th, 2017, from 3 30 p.m. to 7 30 p.m. for a private party. Um, all departments have signed off on it. No detail was required. It would be a private party of less than 35 people, and it's for beer and wine only. Anyone have any questions? No. Seeing none, the uh, chair entertain a motion to approve the application of Jen Forshe for a one-day beer and wine license to be utilized at the Everett Leonard Park <clears throat> on Sunday, August 20th, 2017, from 3.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. for a private party. So moved. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. 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 We all vote yes. Thank you. Under announcements, Mr. Salvo. I don't believe I have anything this month. Mr. Bramwell? I don't have any. Well, Mr. Pryor? I don't have anything. Nothing? Nor do I. So we'll move along here. Pleased tonight to have Mr. Dennis Sahino here with us uh, from Wheaton College to talk about, uh, I guess it's your, this is your State of the Union address? Is this what this <laughs> is? <laughs> it's uh, not quite as formal as the State of the Union. And, uh, Probably not as much to cover. And you brought Mr. Brian Douglas with yes, you also. Uh, okay. um, so uh, pleased as president of Wheaton College to be here, and Brian is our executive vice president overseeing our facilities and all the operations and has a lot of um, uh, significant interaction with the town in many different ways. So, um, you know, as has become a little bit of a custom, uh, you know, I like to stop in at least once a year and share with people. Um, <laughs> things that are happening at Wheaton College, but also to kind of reinforce the spirit of cooperation and collaboration between the college and the town. We take our uh, role as a citizen and a member of the community very seriously. Um, and I'm just finishing my third year, and I, you know, each, each year I've tried to think of new and creative ways to, to engage with the town and to, um, to really think about how together we can make Norton and even uh, Better community for all of us. Um, I think one of the one of the things uh, one of the things we try to do as well, and this is hot off the press, so I'll distribute copies of this as a just a something for the community to share, and I have enough to share with the audience if people would like. Um, just a um, quick summary and overview of some of the things that happen on campus that that connect us with the community. Um, you know, I think it's uh, at the back of the 
of the little booklet that's going around um, also provides some information that I know is, is difficult um, for everybody to, to keep in mind. You know, um, it's not every small town like Norton that has one of the top 50 liberal arts colleges in the country in it. And we recently were ranked number 46 out of all the liberal arts colleges in the U.S. by Wall Street Journal and Times Higher Education. So first time we've cracked that top 50 in a while. And I think it's a should be a point of pride, not just for everybody at Wheaton, but for everybody at Norton. Uh, I think the Wheaton at a glance, the numbers there give you some indication of why we are in that top 50. Um, you know, we're not that big, 1,650 students, but uh, coming from uh, close to 40 different states and from 75 plus different countries, I think if you see our students on the sidewalk, you see the wonderful diversity that we bring to the community. Um, and uh, they enjoy being part of Norton just as much as the college itself enjoys being part of Norton. Um, some of the highlights of the things that we do on campus, you know, every student has guaranteed access to funding for internships. Many of those take place, or some of those take place right in the community. We're always looking for more of those opportunities. I know we've had some who've worked right here in the town hall. Uh, and so, you know, as an open invitation to anybody thinking about how our students can be part of um, um, how our students can be part of the community by serving in internship positions. We have over a hundred different majors and minors on campus, so just about anything imaginable a student can study. Uh, we have the resources to provide um, world-class education in just, in, in just so many different areas. Uh, students can take courses down at Brown University, our students can. Uh, by the way, uh, Norton residents can take courses at Wheaton College as well. We have, stu uh, we have people from the community sign up every year. I taught a course uh, this past year uh, in accounting, my, my discipline, and I will say the best student in the class was the Norton resident not taking it for credit. So, um, and if she's listening, you know, I'll, I'll say that. You give her some kind of credit, come on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, our students study all over the world and travel all over the world, so not only do people come from all over the world to go to Wheaton, but we send people out all over the, the world. Uh, 100 plus student clubs and organizations, which also have an impact on the vitality and the vibrancy of the campus, and I think also the, the local community. Uh, one of our biggest points of pride is that in uh, earning prestigious awards like the Fulbright, the Watson and Rhodes Scholarships, we are one of the leading institutions in the U.S. at gaining those with over 210 students winning those in since the year 2000 uh, every year, knocking down some of those big awards. We've had three Rhodes Scholars since 2000. Most schools don't ever get a Rhodes Scholar. Mm -hmm. And 21 different sports, uh, which also provide a lot of, uh, a lot of um, value for not just the campus community, but for the local community. Yeah. Yep. Well, I was going to say we have actually uh, the league uh, fan of the month here in the audience. Uh, I think it was the month of February, I think. Yeah, <coughs> yeah Peter J. Wiggins. Um, and uh, you may also know that our baseball team went to the World Series this year as one of the top eight teams in the country. So and we enjoyed a lot of support from the community on that. So that's just a, you know, some capsule information about Wheaton College. Some of the things uh, you know, that we're trying to do with the community, uh, one of the things that we reincarnated or maybe really started from scratch this year was the, what we call the Wheaton Community Council. And uh, we uh, invited um, members of the greater Norton and Attleboro and Mansfield community and I think even in the Taunton um, from government, from nonprofit organizations, from uh, businesses to really come together with us uh, on a regular basis to talk about things of common interest and to see a little bit of some of the highlights in the, in the book, here, book here about the Wheaton Community Council. A uh, number of events have come out of that that have uh, really been directly related to the Community Council. We, um, most of those meetings have enjoyed Breakfast meetings have enjoyed about 40 to 50 attendees, uh, which really exceeded our expectations. So uh, showing that the community is as interested in engaging with us as we are interested in engaging with the community. Um, 
couple, you know, kind of things that are really that are coming up in the next couple of weeks that are somewhat related to the community council, but also things that we're doing to try to get into the community is that uh, on Tuesday night coming up, uh, we will have the second annual Battle of East Main Street, where we have challenged uh, the Norton Police and Fire Department uh, to a softball game. Uh, last year was not a pretty sight for Wheaton, I will say. <laughs> we really. We really wanted to give the police and fire department a little bit of a confidence boost, I guess I would say. Not going to happen this year. So. Yeah, bring those World Series guys back for a couple of days. Uh, we, 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 <laughs> we, we've got a little bit more strategy involved this year after uh, one year. So anyways, Tuesday night, 5 o'clock, open to the community. We have free food for everybody, hot dogs, uh, being announced again by the number one fan in Norton, yeah. Peter J. Wiggins. <laughs> Is that, now that's going to be held at the uh, ball field. The softball field, the softball yeah. field, yeah. So we had a great turnout last year. We must have had a couple hundred people come out for it. So the second thing, which is new this year, uh, that we're going to do is we're having a uh, symphony under the stars on Friday, July 28th in the back of the president's house. There's a great lawn back there. And it's not just the Wheaton Symphony, but it's the community symphony, which is also profiled in the book here where it's about you know, two-thirds Wheaton students and one-third members of the community who have come together to form a 70-plus member symphony. Uh, and some subset of that will be performing under the big tree behind the president's house at 8 p.m. on July 28th. And that is open to the community as well. And we really hope for a good turnout to share that uh, with, with uh, members of the community. So even if you're driving by, I'm sure you'll hear the pleasant music playing uh, 8 o'clock that night. Um, we, you know, we also this year for the first time hosted a pancake breakfast for the neighbors that were contingent to Wheaton College. I was amazed at the number of people who came to pancake breakfast and said, I've lived next door and never been on campus before. And that's something that um, I take as a personal challenge, I'd say, to get as many people to see what we have on campus as, as possible. So, so more and more of those things. You know, the thing that has come out of the community council is, is uh, you know, um, probably more than anyone, there's, we've enjoyed some great new businesses coming into the community. So uh, we've gotten them engaged with the community council right away, like El Nylum, for example, even though they're not officially open yet, has been full participant. And of course, the New England Ice Cream Company probably goes easy to un understand that ice cream on a college campus is uh, uh, draws a big crowd, so they've been very supportive of our events and activities, and we're working with them to develop internship programs and other kinds of things for students uh, because both of those organizations have come to me and said our biggest challenge is human resources. And so, yeah. and I'm like, I got 1,650 <laughs> human resources for you. So, um, you know, some of the things that are on the horizon for us, uh, you know, we, we actually, um, have each of the last two years enjoyed um, hitting our enrollment targets quite comfortably, which uh, is a, a real point of pride because colleges and universities in general have struggled, uh, small colleges in particular. And last year, uh, we had an enrollment goal of 500, and we were about 40 over that. This year, our enrollment goal stays around the same, and we're right on target with that. We'll be around 500 to 510 probably when the, when the dust settles. Uh, and so, you know, we're able to bring in, and this, this will be the most selective class that we've had uh, in a number of years. Uh, we had over 6,000 applicants for those 500 seats. Literally, again, we have over 70 students, 70 different countries represented on campus. We got applications, I think, from over 130 different countries um, to come to Wheaton College. Um, you know, we do our best to raise the, ability of, uh, raise the visibility in positive ways. Uh, you know, we, we also work with the national press, because uh, there are two Wheaton colleges, as you probably know, uh, and we're two very different Wheaton colleges. And so we look at being in Newark, Massachusetts as a point of pride. And so if you were to look in today's Washington Post, you would see an article uh, and a, a column that I wrote it starts right off by saying president of Wheaton College in Norton, Massachusetts. So um, so we really do everything we can to remind people that we're in this great community and uh, proud to be part of it. Um, our, in my first uh, 
two years there, we, we embarked on a uh, ambitious strategic planning exercise. And coming out of that, we are in full force implementing some of the things that came out of that. Uh, one of the visible things that you will see, uh, or one of the one of the kind of big areas of focus for us is, you know, we've been around since 1834, and some of those buildings have been around since 1834. So one, as we were talking before we started, you'll see the sprucing up work this summer around the chapel, which is such a landmark, and Mary Lyon, the big yellow building on 123, is uh, also going to be all touched up and really uh, looking good by the fall. Um, we, our board of trustees, has endorsed um, an ambitious facilities investment plan, which over the next 10 years will have us working on about nine different projects. Eight of the nine do not involve new construction. They are all looking at existing buildings and resources and saying, how can we use them better? Uh, and how can we maintain the historical nature of the college uh, and the beauty of the college without breaking ground or doing anything to kind of upset the, the environment that we have there? Um, perhaps one of the major um, facilities improvements we made this year, which was really a, you know, prior, perhaps one of the most vivid examples of town Wheaton uh, collaboration was tying into the sewer system. And um, um, Brian in particular had worked on that for a number of years and uh, it was a, a great day on campus when we decommissioned our sewer plant uh, and tied in and as a result, um, you know, helped the town fund the project that reaches into those parts of the community that hadn't been able to have it before. Um, you know, we, um, I think one of the other things that's highlighted in here is just um, some of the, some of the impact that we have in terms of the numbers. And so, you know, there's uh, the investment in the local economy. Um, employees living in Bristol County, we pump over $15 million uh, into uh, wages alone for people who live in Bristol County. Uh, we spend, as a, as a college, over $3 million on goods and service from businesses here in Bristol County. Uh, some people think that because we're a nonprofit organization that we don't pay the town anything. I think those <coughs> of you around the table know that's not true, and last year, our total of uh, remittances to the town was over $300,000, including property taxes on some of our buildings uh, that we have voluntarily agreed to pay property taxes on. Uh, and we have almost 300 employees living right here in Bristol County as well. We did a study of how much our students pump into the local economy, and our best guess is that they're spending alone at the four Dunkin' Donuts in town and the bagel shop and places like that is over, <coughs> is over $2 million a year. So um, so we, we're proud of that impact. Um, and we're always thinking about ways that we can increase uh, not just the economic impact, but the way that we work with various organizations. You'll see a lot of um, some, lang some, some discussion in here about the various social services organization that we partner with. Our students put in a, an inordinate amount of hours, um, over 3,300 hours of community service in the last academic year. Um, and I'd say that we have an insatiable appetite for that. So we're always looking for more ways to work with the schools and the senior citizens and the uh, food bank and things like that. So um, so I think I'll stop there. Um, you know, that just gives you an overview of some of the things that are on our mind about you know where we're headed and what's happening on campus, but also um, you know just really here to as well thank the town for being so great to work with on so many different levels. Uh, you know personally, and Brian and I have a lot of contact with you know many of the people in the room here. Uh, we have enjoyed every minute of it and look at it as a, a very positive and productive relationship and lots of good conversations about ways that we can continue to work together. So. I don't know if there's anything on the list of activities. I think you hit it well. I would just echo that last point, which is just that in, in my five years, which is nothing like all of you and, and your length of service or the 180 years history here at, at, uh, in Wheaton and Norton, um, never has our working relationship been better with the town. And that, I think, starts at the top with this group and with Mike's leadership. But I you know, recognize you know, Brian and Jennifer and others in, in who really have Help us do many things around campus and 
for appreciative of the partnership. And so very good about the working relationship we have. Well, it's working both ways. Because <clears throat> I know that the veterans, as an example, are extremely proud of the fact that Wheaton has now joined us on and, and during, during the special events, Veterans Day Parade, Memorial Day Parade. And the President Haino has been there a number of times. If he couldn't make it, he always made sure someone else was there. That's something new and different. And, you know, for years we walked by the campus and it was really a t nothing, nothing, no recognition at all. And today it's much, much more uh, visible to everyone having the opportunity to go by there to see that, you know, they're out there and they're supporting the veterans. And that's, that's a big deal to, you know, the people in Norton. And I know, I know they've been very, very thankful for that, <coughs> that participation. And I know it's been a big, big deal. The sewer connection, I know you guys wanted, I know you wanted to stay in the sewer business, but <laughs> we had to talk you out of it. But yeah. it's great that uh, that's finally connected and, and working, and that is going to have a major impact on the de redevelopment of our Main Street, our West Main Street section of town coming down from our schools. And because of your generosity and your, your, your ability and your willingness to partner up with us to make that happen, that's, that's been a big deal. And that's, that's definitely going to make, uh, make things a lot, uh, a lot better for everyone. Very proud of the ball, ball, game, ball team. You know, we were, we were rooting for them, too. And, uh, you know, people have to realize that there is a ball field there right on the corner of, of um, Mansfield Ave and, you know, 140, 123. And that's, anyone can go and watch and, and participate and, 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 and watch that game. It's, it's a great, great uh, opportunity. You're probably noticing we're doing some work on the, finally on the Town Common, absolutely, yep. and we're finally getting some of that done. Uh, we need a lot more money to go with that, but we're working in different ways to do that. And the sidewalks are going in. I know there's talk about working with Wheaton to put sidewalks, additional sidewalks in front of your facility, and that's a long time coming. Yeah. You know, years ago, when before you guys were here, when that was parking on one side of the street and on the, on the college side, um, when we took that away, that's like a wide boulevard through there that's just been wasted all these years. And we're going to kind of retweak that whole intersection and, and try to work with you guys to put in some new sidewalks. And then we, we want to talk about that old library at mm -hmm. some point. You know, maybe there's a way we can partner up with you guys to get that thing back to some. I, mean, I remember the beautiful building that was, and I, I don't even want to see what it looks like today. Mm -hmm. But I. Um, I know you guys would like to use that facility if you could figure out a way to do it, and I think we want to help you on that. Figure out. We'd love to partner on that. It's, uh, it's, you know, fortunately from the outside it still looks great, but the inside obviously, um, I haven't seen it either to be honest with you. But uh, I can only imagine. But every time I drive by as well, I just look at it as such an opportunity, given its location, to be a pivotal, pivotal entry point for both the town and for Wheaton College. Uh, town college welcome center for example or a, for the historical society right. an archive of some kind there's <coughs> to do with that it you know i think uh, the only way we're going to get there is probably with um some federal f or state funding of some kind around historical preservation because it's mm -hmm. going to take some significant work but I, I honestly think it's worth it we talk about it quite a bit so yeah, yeah. we need to talk more about that yeah and also you know i would reiterate um you spoke with me when you started uh, doing the planning for the, uh, the the small park there. That you know we are willing uh, to contribute yep. uh, landscaping and other kinds of things that will mm -hmm. help you get that to where you want it to be. Yep. Um, you know we view that as it's part of our front porch as well. So yep. um, we would be glad to help you make it be what you want it to be. So yeah. we'll, we'll be in touch. Believe me. We'll I know we have uh, Megan Cass. Uh, yeah, she's been a great, great on the committee partner on that, too. On. I know we have other members of our community on various other committees on mm -hmm. in town. So, yeah, We just went through a major expense putting a well on there, so we finally have a well. Mm -hmm. So now that we've got that, we can start improving the landscaping. We, we, don't want it, and we don't want to put everything in there and just watch it burn up, either. So now at least we have that opportunity. And also as a member of the community uh, council, uh, having the, the ability whether it be a business person or a town resident or a person from the area, it's been exciting to, to, to participate and follow that because it's interesting to see the different ideas and views. And what's really important is the president and the college willing to listen to some of the mm -hmm. feedback on you know what we think is important. And I think it's been a, a great opportunity, a great exercise. I've never had an opportunity to work with the college as closely as we have, and it's it really is has paid off to be. Uh, a great opportunity, a great idea you guys had to 
pull this thing all together and just made it made a really big big deal out of it. Mike, you want to add anything to it? Uh, I just wanted to thank the college. Uh, one of the students from Wheaton, um, I'm not sure which department they would have worked with, uh, organized our cleanup day this year in town. Um, I forget which department head they worked with, but uh, they were very, he was very helpful in uh, organizing that for us. Glad to be of assistance. Is there any, I mean, this is an opportunity as well for you to, if there's anything that any of the members of the board think of in terms of things we need to work on or ideas for the future, I'd be more than willing to. So one, thing, one thing, we were talking about the town common and that intersection is horrendous. And most of my interaction with your students is when they're walking down to the donut shop. Yeah, the, CV, it's usually CVS, CVS, CVS Walgreens. Yeah. Walgreens. Yeah. <clears throat> and I cringe every time they try to cross because of the horrible state of that uh, traffic light. Yep. And we've, on numerous occasions, voiced our concerns to Mass Highway. Yep. And I think maybe if we could also get Wheaton on, on board to help pressure, because there's got to be, there's absolutely no way they should be allowing crossing when people yep. and cars going in the same time. And uh, it's something that I hope we can get you involved too. So Boy, I mean, the, I, more, the more pressure we can bring on these people. We had a student who was hit. Um, he wasn't in the crosswalk. It was last summer, spring, uh, spring of 2016. Uh, fortunately, nothing was critical, but he was injured. And I will tell you, my first weekend on campus, walking or in in this town of Norton, walking across that, was a rude welcome <laughs> when uh, somebody in a pickup truck went by and. Um, um, Said hello to my wife and I, <laughs> um, with a few other words mixed mm -hmm. in there, you know. You're so from out of town. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a, <laughs> you know, it's not a, it's not the place that you want to be the center of town. So yeah, no, it, it amazes me that they, they actually did a traffic study and came up with some engineers came up with this yeah. plan, but that's I've been complaining about that for a yeah. long time. <laughs> but that's one thing that I like to, you know, see if between us and Wheaton, even possibly on the Taunton Ave, maybe we might steal three feet of your property to move the sidewalk back so we can get, yep. you know, an extra lane in there or something. But, you know, a little give and take, but I think mostly having uh, your voice at the table with the Mass Highway might help us also. And other than that, not as an idea, but in all my years in Norton, I know I had told you at one of the breakfasts that you can count on the fingers of one hand how many times I've been on campus. Well, we can do it on two hands now, but... <laughs> we're getting but there. We're getting there, but the point is, I, I think the attitude is totally different, and uh, it's more welcoming, and yeah. I think the outreach that I feel since uh, President Hanno has taken over, is, it's it's almost like a 180. I, I don't know what it is. It's almost like the wall came down. Well, you know, I used, I, here's why. I mean, I used this picture today to somebody. I said, how could you not want to share that with people? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that is truly one of the most beautiful campuses is. in America. It is. It is. And uh, sure, we enjoy it, but it, we're part of the town. So we're proud, you know, we had the uh, seniors come for senior prom, the local high school seniors come for senior prom pictures, and it was the same weekend, same day as our, leading up to our graduation stuff, and someone said, we can't have that happen. I'm like, yes, we can. <laughs> you know, we got a lot of room. We're not going to deny them taking pictures in front of the beautiful facilities that we have. And so I, mean, I, I take great pleasure when I walk around campus and see people from the community walking around the campus. I, I think it's a treasure uh, that we all should enjoy. And, you know, obviously it has to be a reason for you to want to come on, and that's why I hope to see you all on July 28th at the – um, Symphony Under the Stars it should be quite a night. So yeah. Oh, yeah. The um, <laughs> one the one thing I'll never forget when, when we mentioned the chapel is 9/11. We all met on the common. Uh, we had clergy. We had everyone there speaking. Uh, it's probably more hawkish than most at the time. Uh, but the one thing I'll never forget it was a dreary day like today, and there are some people that still remember this. And suddenly a bolt of light came out and hit the top of that steeple. Mm -hmm. Chapel. Wow. The only thing that was lit up was the top of that chapel for a very brief minute or two. 
and it was it was an, it was an, it was obvious enough that a lot of us saw it, and you know it was like something you wanted to take a picture of. But uh, Wheaton has been a part of this community, you can say, for 100 and, 180 years, and that that again is another example of you know others watching out for us. You know we are as a community making this stuff happen, and uh, you know it's, it's it has been a pleasure, like like Brad said. To, to work with you guys has been so different than it has been in the past. And some of us have sat here for a while and gone through a few administrations, but um, you guys have definitely set the bar higher and we appreciate all you're doing for us. We really do. Well, we'll never, we'll never turn down your call. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm always willing to buy a meal for, every, <laughs> for anybody here that <coughs> stop by. And, is is this a new report that you is this the first so we year you've done this last year was the first year that we did a version of this mm -hmm. uh so we to be honest we don't distribute it widely enough i think it That's should be like in the roach brothers yeah and yeah it should. So, it should be yeah so we will this we just i gave our our graphics folks today as the goal so i got them today but uh you'll start hopefully to see them around town so yeah no, these are beautiful i think it's a great yeah it's a great document yeah, it's great. It's got some great information in it, too. Yeah, because I, I don't know. We have space here at Town here. Hall. If you want to bring some over here, we can yeah. gladly put them out where people can pick them up and read them, yeah. see what you guys are doing. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think that'd be, you know, I think that'd be great in your next brochure you do. Like, like I said, maybe add a community calendar of baseball uh, games or yeah. soccer games or whatever you do that maybe people would like to go see yeah, and watch. There's a mention of the link in there for that because a lot of it is uh, it probably should be more prominent to be honest. I saw it you know, like here, but um, I think that's a good point because one of the challenges is there are so many things happening and they you know they evolve over time. Uh, living on campus, I can tell you there isn't hardly a day during the academic year, especially where there isn't something that my wife or I don't go to because it's like, oh, wow, I can't believe that's right here on campus. You know, the quality of performances and speakers and, you know, uh, uh, you know, we even had a presidential candidate on campus last year. You probably didn't even know that. It wasn't a, it wasn't a first or second party one. It was Jill Stein, but, um, you know, so, um, and we've had, uh, Dukakis was there. Dukakis, Mike Dukakis was there. Uh, 20 years ago. Yeah. Actually, he was one of the best <laughs> talks I have ever heard, so. <laughs> Um, so anyways, those kinds of things, and um, I've often said, you know, I'd love, if it didn't look so ugly, a, a big, one of those flashing signs with the arrow down by the La Park there that says, happening today, but mm -hmm. uh, it's, um, uh, you know, I think, uh, some, like this uh, concert, we're trying to put posters up around town and things too, so people know about it, so. Send the information to us, we'll put it up on our community site also. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't understand why the... The cable can't yeah. access them yeah. and do it on their own. They I mean, probably mm -hmm. could. Yeah. They we've should talk to broadcast the concert. They probably will. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we've talked about the fact that it'd be nice to broadcast some of the sporting events from Wheaton. Yeah. And that's never happened. Well, maybe we can at least get uh, a calendar of events mm -hmm. so that, you know, yep. what's happening over at Wheaton this week. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Plus, right here, here in your channel. Covers the, covers the sporting events at Wheaton College. And sometimes Friday, I was there for the big top of the fire at the Wheaton on last Friday, and I was there and I videotaped it. Very good. One of the other things I would tell you, too, that, um, I, you know, I know you're always listening, there's meetings and space that space needs that we all have. Um, you know, I can't promise that there's always room, and, but. Um, you know, spacious as this. It, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't saying anything, but it, particularly in the summertime. And you know, we have over the last few years worked on air conditioning a lot more of our facilities, and um, you know, for retreats and things like that, uh, we'd be more than happy to entertain um, hosting you. And, and and seriously, our dining facilities, uh, we were number 23 in the US, I think. Top 25 in two different rankings. Yeah, top 25 in two different rankings for dining, dining facilities. Yeah. And that's one of those things that two years ago, people would have said, oh, that's ridiculous, but not now. Uh, we've really upgraded. Those of you who have been in the renovated dining facilities, one of the nicest restaurants in Norton, I'd say. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> very much. Anyone else? Questions? Good. 
Yep. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you very we much for the it. opportunity. Uh, again, we really your visit. working with you. And, uh, we will uh, continue to seek substantive ways to interact and right. make for a better <coughs> I'll see you soon. Yep. Take care. Thank you. Come. Okay, I'm going to skip around a bit. Um, the Chief Clark is here. We have the appointment of special police officers. Uh, Chief, you want to move you up? Good evening. Thank you. Uh, just to kind of piggyback that, you know, we've had a, I've always considered ourselves from the police department to have a good relationship with Wheaton College. And certainly when uh, Brian Douglas came and, and now the president, it really has, it's just uh, been tenfold what we, what we had before. And it's uh, looking forward to another win on Tuesday. He's still around. <laughs> he didn't hear you. <laughs> you, better, you better be careful he doesn't bring in a few <laughs> ringers, you know. <laughs> So just to, as an overview, so last year at this time we had nine special police officers. Um, two have been hired to go to the full-time academy, are currently in the academy. Four other people resigned. One was became an Attleboro police officer and three others uh, due to the job commitment and balance of family and, and other things. Um, just It just didn't work out for them and they had, they had been with us for a number of years. Uh, we obviously recently hired one special police officer and this... Uh, so we have a complement of four, and this will bring us to six, and we have a couple others in the queue. So uh, from the special police process, it's the same as a full-time process. We send them through an oral board interview, a background investigation, uh, medical and psychological um, evaluations. And uh, for to be a special police officer, you also have to pass a, a 345-and-a-half-hour reserve intermittent academy, which is quite, uh, quite lengthy. It's... Uh, three nights a week plus a Saturday. So there's a lot of work to it in a short period of time. So uh, tonight, I'd like to seek your appointment for uh, Evan Matoza and Seth Stewart. Uh, they're both residents of Norton. Evan has an associate's degree from Bristol Community College. And again, he completed the uh, Reserve Intermittent Academy. And Seth Stewart is also a resident of Norton. He has a bachelor's degree from the University of Lowell and, uh, and also completed the Reserve Intermittent Academy. Upon, uh, upon the appointment, what they'll do is they'll go to uh, firearms training and then uh, be put with a field training officer. So upon su successful completion of that, they'll be on their own. That's great. So, if there's any questions? Or Anyone have any questions? Well, gentlemen, we look forward to you uh, getting, your, getting your training and hopefully you can move up into the position of a full-time police officer. We can always, it's always great to have people like yourself Mm -hmm. You know, they grew up in the town and understand the town and know how it works. And I think it's great that uh, I'd love to have one down my neighborhood. <laughs> even better. But uh, I think it's uh, always an opportunity, and we're, we're very thrilled about the fact that you know, quality of education, the quality of the people coming forward these days to, to serve in these capacities has been tremendous. Mm. You know, in the old days it was, you know, my cousin Louie knows my uncle Pete, and mm. we're going to get to give the guy, give the kid a job, and it's different today. Mm -hmm. You know, we're our expectations are higher. You know, we have a good quality force now, and we want to continue to maintain that and improve on it. So, um, again, a couple of great representatives of uh, a community and how you guys can, can make it better. You definitely Thank can. You. you definitely can. Anyone else? Well, just, I mean, Chief Clark has built an organization over there that uh, it's, I mean, it's received accreditations. Yep. It's shown that he, he's building it a proper police force that has uh, proper training, they have proper procedures, and unlike most places, they actually follow their procedures. <laughs> and um, it speaks highly for both him and the town. <coughs> and uh, I'm proud to know a lot of the people that work for the chief, and I'm sure I'll be proud to meet and, and hopefully not interact too much with <laughs> the two new ones. <laughs> He's a lot of trouble, you know. <laughs> Yeah, they're both very impressive uh, resumes, and I wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you. Okay. Having said all that, um, let me read this. You got it? You want to do it? You want to do it? Yeah. Let me do it? Do it yeah. I'll do it. Oh, thank you. Um, to the Board of Selectmen from Michael D. Eunice, Town Manager, dated July 11, 2017. Notice of appointment of a special police officer. I hereby notify the Board of Selectmen that in accordance with the provisions of Article 4, Section 2B 
of the Norton Charter, acting in my capacity of the appointing authority, I have appointed the following individual as a special police officer, Evan R. Matoza. Said appointment made on July 11, 2017 in accordance with the provisions of the Norton Charter will be effective July 26, 2017, unless the Board of Selectmen votes to accept or reject the appointment prior to said date. I especially request this board to accept the appointment with the effective date of July 14, 2017. Motion, we have a second? Second. second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, get One more. Okay. <laughs> the Board of Selectmen from Michael D. Eunice, town manager, dated July 11, 2017, Notice of appointment of a special police officer. I hereby notify the Board of Selectmen that in accordance with the provisions of Article 4, Section 2B of the Norton Charter, acting in my capacity of the appointing authority, I have appointed the following individual as a special police officer, Seth T. Stewart. Said appointment made on July 11, 2017 in the accordance with provisions of the Norton Charter and will be effected July 26, 2017, unless the Board of Selectmen votes to accept or reject the appointment prior to said date. I specifically request this board to accept the appointment with the effective date of July 14, 2017. Motion to second. Second. Motion to second. Wait for a discussion. Yeah. Seeing none, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Congratulations, gentlemen. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Are they looking younger to you guys these days? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Thanks, Brett. Okay, we'll get back on the agenda here to back to presentation of the open space plan update. I think I saw Jennifer back there somewhere. Come on up. Um, so Bill Napolitano from Serpid is here as well. You got new microphones. Yes. Thanks, Chair. So a few handouts for you. Uh, if you remember at the fall town meeting, we had approval for the funding to have Serpid help us with the update of the open space plan. Uh, so we started with that uh, at the beginning of the year. We did the town-wide survey in March. And so you'll see the results of the survey are on the front page for you. Um, mostly the uh, respondents said that open space is very important to try to protect aquifer land. Uh, the activities that they enjoy the most are hiking and walking, both on paved and unpaved paths. Uh, but most people don't know where our land is. They just can't find the property. We don't have uh, parking. We've been working on the signs, but um, there's not a lot of money or staffing. So uh, the biggest problems are the signs and the parking, lack of trail maps, and a lot of people mention the trash around town everywhere. They did pick some specific parcels to preserve. So you'll see on the list, 36% uh, of the people who responded said Houghton's Farm on Leonard Street was an important area as well as Camp Edith Reed on Northwester Street. So we have it from the survey and our committee, we have a new set of goals for the open space plan. And so the first goal is to protect the quality and quantity of the town's ground and surface water resources, preserve critical natural resources for intact uh, fisheries and wildlife habitat corridors. Uh, preventing the loss of rural agricultural uh, hi historical areas in town. Um, to develop a wayfinding and sign model for the townwide use of conservation and recreation property. If we had a consistent sign type, um, then people would know that's associated with the town of Norton. And then the land trust has their own signage. Uh, try to come up with a uniform way for people to um, know that property is public property. Mm -hmm. Uh, as well as finding the access and getting the parking lots in there and the signage. Also looking at promoting and coordinating um, 
responsible land use management, so having management plans for a lot of our property, environmental education, uh, expanding and improving recreational opportunities for um, all ages and all abilities, uh, trying to have good, lifelong, healthy communities, and expanding recreational opportunities on water bodies and waterways. And then from the goals and objectives and the comments from the survey, we come up with an action plan. So this this is, these are the projects that we want to conduct over the next uh, seven years, and we broke them up into different segments. So um, the first one to three years, these are the projects that we'd like to try to accomplish. Um, then we have it broken down into projects that are four to seven years, and then there are ongoing projects that we try to do all the time. Uh, it's a little different than the last open space plan. Uh, <laughs> no, it's actually a better way of doing it. The, the open space plan, they actually require you to put down exactly which year you plan on doing these projects. But as we all know, the projects only come up when you have the funding right, right. and you have the opportunity to do that project. So um, Bill had a great idea of breaking them up into these segments so we could still mix them around and have, <coughs> have the projects done as they're available. Uh, so, are there any projects that the selectmen would like to see? Any priorities that uh, you may have for some types of projects in town? Uh, really the biggest one is the wayfinding, trying to get the parking, the signage, and the trail maps. Um, working on trash would be a, another really big thing. Um, maybe with the Board of Health trying to get townwide recycling and, and garbage pickup. Um, it's going to be a, an important activity for us. Mr. Sabo. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, thank you. I, I think, you know, what Jen just said, that, that's probably one of the biggest uh, and most important uh, project to be taken in the town. I mean, I've been in town 40-something years, and I know a lot of recreational areas, but I don't know them all, and I'm sure we have tons of property that is owned by conservation that would you know, <laughs> be nice to be posted. Mm -hmm. So actually, people will know exactly where it is, and you know, down the road. I know it's all about money and everything, but believe me, I I could tell, I can tell you a handful of my you know that I know where they are, but I'm sure we have a lot of them, right, Jen? We do, we do. But you know, that's an undertaking in itself. It's it's a big project. I think it's a very big project. Yeah. Having projects within the open space plan opens us up to a lot of grant funding. So it's important to get any ideas. Both your point, though, if you have a parking area to, that, where people can actually stop and mm -hmm. yeah. know, that, that flags it. I mean, you, when you drive down North Washington Street and you go over to 495 and they got a little parking area down on the left, you, that's a flag that tells people, oh, by the way, you can park here. Yeah. Why do you want to park here? Well, now you find out what it's all about. And I think that's, that's a very, very big part of the process you know, to make it happen. I know for myself, because I'm in North Worcester, mm -hmm. the Rose Farm. Right. Yeah. It's, I mean, it was always a beautiful place. They used to have the ice skating in the winter, and the entry just gets so overgrown. It's overgrown. That I don't even know if people can see where it is. And it's too bad, like, we couldn't get volunteers to help open it up or something, or I've often thought, like... Uh, we have some volunteers, but there's a lot of poison ivy. <laughs> so we have fewer volunteers for poison ivy duty. Goats. Bring goats in. Yeah. But it's just that I had always thought that it would be so nice mm -hmm. if they could get it and then maybe have a police officer, you know, at dawn unlock it and at dusk drive down, make sure there's nobody out there and on the way back lock the gate. And just to get people to use that area because, mm -hmm. and speaking of that, then you go to the prospect of Edith Reed. Yeah. I've walked that property as a boy, and I mean, I've walked from North Worcester up to, it was uh, Skinner's Pond mm -hmm. when uh, Everett Leonard owned the house there, and then we'd walk down to Finberg Field uh, Camp, Camp Finberg, and over to Oak Street. It's actually a project that we've started talking about with the YMCA um, yeah, it's a, and, it's the, an and the Girl Scouts. Property. Mm -hmm. But it's... It's so damp and you know so wet out there that it's not anything that a developer is going to have any use for. But it's a beautiful place to have nature trails, and uh, I mean, I, I doubt if I could 
I, no, I could find my way around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But uh, we may have to come find you afterwards. No, <laughs> I, I, I'm very good. Once I've been someplace once, I'm all set. But uh, so I think just if we can try to open, even if it's one a year, mm -hmm. if we can open up a place, and like I said, if it's something like Rose Farm where the parking is off-road, see if we can't get enli enlist the police department to open and close the gate at dusk and dawn. That way there, we're not going to have a, uh, you know, party parking lot at night that's going to disturb the uh, neighbors, but it's going to allow people to utilize the property because that, that's a beautiful piece of land. Yeah, one it of the great is, things agree. about that is it's, it's really heart and soul issues, the kind of things you're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. It's really the heart and soul of the community. You've had the vision to set aside the space. Now you want the public to be able right. to use it. Right. Right. And the more public use you have, the more visible it becomes, the less you have the trash issues, you know, the party issues, things like that. So the fact that the citizens recognize that in the survey and the committee's really been pursuing this and putting together the actions. And I, I'd have to say I work with a lot of towns. Your open space committee, the people that you appointed have been fabulous. Good. Jen has really driven the committee well. I mean, we've accomplished a lot. We're way, <laughs> we're way ahead of where driven. we should be, actually. <laughs> and one of the great things, too, is once you have a certified plan and you have these uh, actions identified, a lot of them just aren't married to the open space plans and the grants that the open space plan makes you eligible for. There are other grants out there, and we've had a pretty good history of being able to pull in grants from other areas, maybe to get signage grants, maybe to get cleanup grants, things like that, you know, appraisals for property you might want to improve. improve. So, that, you know, those possibilities exist too, but, and the fact that um, Jen said that your plan is structured a little differently now, one of the things I found out is that by not pinning an action to a year or a particular department, you know, a singular department to be done in a year, but more cooperative and partnerships and bringing in the outside people. I thought it was great that Wheaton was here because they're in the plan too. Mm -hmm. It allows you the time to develop projects, think about projects, run them through the proper channels and accomplish them. So when we go with the years one to three, those are kind of like low-hanging fruit, things that you could accomplish without a, maybe a lot of difficulty. Mm -hmm. Four to seven gives you time to really work out some projects a little more. And one to seven are the things you should be doing all along to promote community awareness help people realize what they have, you know, and again, what you've had the vision to set aside for public use. So I, I think it, it looks like it's gonna be a really good plan and it's been a great process. It's been a pleasure to work with uh, the committee. Thank you. I think finding what's left of the land out there too and continuing to protect it and, and buy it up as fast as we can is important. Getting back to Edith Reed as an example. Now, you know, obviously they wanna sell it. YMCA, I believe, is interested in using it some, in some way if they, if they have the ability to do so. We maybe can come up with a creative way to where we can buy it mm -hmm. down and lease it to them for a minimal amount, whatever, you know, and maybe help not so much pay for it, but maybe keep it up and maintain it and have some use in it because you know what happens. You, know, you walk away from it from two years and two years later you look at it and say, it's nothing but poison ivy and and everything, Mother Nature has taken over again, so it doesn't take long, especially in the season we're having this year. Yeah. I mean, everything's growing out there. <laughs> Things are growing yeah. on rocks, I think, right about now. But um, Even my hair's you know, growing. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, I believe it is, actually. But no, um, if, so, if, if you could find someone willing to try to clean up the rose farm entry, <coughs> I might be able to help you with. First of all, I'm very good locating poison ivy and, and <laughs> taking it down without getting, uh, well, I'll tell you, I, I'll tell you a story about a friend who got a bad case, so I made a terrarium, just poison ivy, and I never got a speck on me, so <laughs> I'm pretty good at it, but no, I, I might be Happy able, to enlist your help. I <laughs> might be, I'd be willing to give you a hand, and uh, I might be able to, if, I'm not sure what the, the uh, driveway and the, uh, parking area, it can, what condition it's in, but maybe I might be able to have a sauce to get. I don't some. think there is a parking area. It's just you drive in and you park on the on the field. It used to be. Yeah, I thought it was like, yeah. like crushed stone or something. But it was know. back there one time. I think the, the, the point though is probably a big machine has to go in there and do some some trimming to get the big stuff down. Then we can go back and figure out what's there after. I don't know. Yeah. But whatever. Now, we can I'm certainly add it to the plan and make sure it's, it's part of it. Or you don't? 
Um, but either three, I think, is very important. I think we need to continue to focus on that. Mm -hmm. The other one that we, uh, it's not part of conservation, it's not part of recreation, it's the Fernandes Park that we, we have ignored for years. The Fernandes family donated that land to us on, on West Main a number of years ago. And, you know, we'd never been in a position, there is a plan somewhere. A very old plan. There's, there's, there's a plan. It, but, <laughs> but it's, uh, there's a significant amount of wetland and flood issues. A lot of wetlands issues, in there. there was it would a draft. be more, mostly trails, I guess it would be what mm -hmm. the trails idea would be. I don't see it being a park, but I can see it being an area where people could park and walk through it. But is, get out behind may, the reservoir. I just raise a question. Is there even area there to have an area for parking? Or would they have to park across the street? Uh, if I remember the plan correctly, with the amount of wetland, there's not really an area for It was a, a parking high lot. point further up where they had maybe a few parking spaces, but to get there, I think it had some problems getting to... There's getting also the a private area. driveway over the town's access. So yeah, that's a different story. That has to be worked out. <laughs> but it's there. We have it right away. You, you have the access. It's your property. Anyone else? Well, certainly Obviously if you think of anything, it. let me know, yeah. and we'll add it to the plan. I'll just tell you the next steps yep. just to finish. So we have a couple fix sections to finish. Yep. Um, we have the ADA compliance report that we need to do, and the building inspector will help me um, do the ADA report. It's a couple of pages for each conservation and recreation parcel yeah, and, um, and bill. So the plan is actually due in October. And um, we are well on our way to, to being finished with the plan before October, before the expiration date. And uh, we definitely want to thank all of the people who have come to our meetings and answered the survey, and definitely Wheaton and the YMCA. This is the first time we've ever been able to have um, outside Norton residents uh, come and participate in the plan, and they've been a, a big help, and we really appreciate their time coming to the meetings and participating. And there's a lot of land between conservation and recreation and uh, land preservation. The new bike path, I believe, opens up some spots that mm -hmm. we probably never thought about before. And I went down there last Sunday. I was taking a walk at the Crane and Crane Street end of it mm -hmm. with the pavement that's there because they're doing the, the um, sewer expansion out there. So they paved a portion of it. If you want to get a visual of what the back bike path will look like stand there and look at it from that point of view it's gonna be beautiful yeah it's gonna be a beautiful piece of uh, mm -hmm. property running right through the center of town so it's gonna it's gonna look really nice and i don't want to bring this up again but i know i've been kicked around a couple of times in the past at some point we should have some discussion about the community preservation act again mm -hmm. um, town has voted it down i believe twice in the past but i think part of the reason for the the um, people voting it went against it was that they didn't quite understand the whole process and how it works. And recently I've been reading in the paper about certain communities actually using that money now to buy open space, to buy land. Oh, they've make, been doing make it improvements for on buildings they already have. Oh, yeah. And using that money as the match for the grant. So you're not exactly. appropriating anything at not town meeting. Anymore. Yeah. And as I recall, it was mostly, the, the funds were raised through sale of property. And so if somebody was selling a house, a portion of that, a percentage of that would go into this preservation fund. Mm -hmm. Or if they were buying a house, you know, depend one way that it was only charged one time, but it was yeah. it was set up in a different way. But I honestly think that we uh, maybe the open space committee should look at that again and see if that's something we we want to try to promote again and see if we can make it work. Okay. Right, right, right. I mean, if you'd like us to add that to the plan, we can certainly yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, is that like a one to three year yeah. thing or a four to seven? Yeah, I think it's important we look at it again. Okay. I think we're leaving a lot of money on the table. We've kicked that around, and what we can do too is every open space plan has an appendix in it that helps explain some of the sections in there and add supplemental material. I'd be happy to put in an appendix for you on the okay. uh, Community Preservation Act that's really short, sweet, to the point, very easily understood. Mm -hmm. I've done this in other communities. And uh, yeah, slowly but surely, in southeastern Massachusetts, we were slow. I, I think it's the maybe the old Yankee stubbornness sometimes, <laughs> but a lot of the communities have been coming around. And yeah. the things that Jen's talking about, they finally realized that 
it helps you not have to appropriate money at town meeting you know extra money from the cash fund because it's comes out of like you said property taxes transfers business at the registry of deeds at the state level right. and everything <coughs> goes on in norton is actually still being you know contributed to the state so towns that do have the community preservation act get to use funds that you know your actions contribute your development actions contribute and i think probably a couple of public hearings on it to openly discuss it what it's all about you know perhaps you could help us with that we can get folks in absolutely and just talk about what what it really is because i think there's a lot of misconceptions in the last two attempts people were led to believe it was more than what it really was mm -hmm. so i think if we can clear up some of that fabrication and from the, from the get-go, we'd be better off you know, in the long process. That fits in with our ongoing education initiatives in the one to seven. Yeah. None of us are going to sell our houses in the next 20, 30 years. So <laughs> that Anybody else? Nope. We really appreciate what you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank Keep you. it going. Thank you. Good job, John. Thank, Thank you. For the small fee can be of any help. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Okay, where am I? Oh, yeah. Both are authorized Chairman Kimball to sign the surge contracts. Did you bring them? Is he here? You, they, uh, ones here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. The uh, surge contracts, you already voted on the, the, con the amount and the contracts came. And rather than have everybody sign, there's like 20 of them. I thought we did that last I year. think it's close to 30, 30 of them, actually. You did vote to approve them. Oh, I thought we had voted to let him sign them. No. I'm almost sure we did. Okay. <laughs> well, the good so, news is I did sign them already. So, so if you authorize me to. I vote to authorize them. Chairman Kimball to sign the surge contracts. Second. Second. Motion second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I would imagine so. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. I already took care of it, just so you know. Almost as a sleeve of paper. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next we have the vote to authorize the veteran service officer and consulate aging director to enter a, into a memorandum of understanding to participate in a CAR pilot. So, All yours. What okay, we, this is a new this? program that um, uh, the veterans agent and the council on aging director would like to become part of uh, the YMCA St. Vincent Department, <coughs> the Martin School Department are becoming part of this. It's a pilot program to work with Uber to set up rides for people, um, say a veteran needs a ride to the VA hospital or to a doctor's appointment on hours when GATRA service isn't available. Um, this would allow them to get a, a ride from an Uber vehicle. And um, this would cost uh, $250. They're going to split it 125 and 125 out of the monies they have. And it would, um, they say at the average of uh, $13 per ride, it would provide about 50 to 70 rides a year. So um, a lot of the area um, charitable organizations are getting involved in it. And it will be a good test uh, at this number to see how it works out. So if someone needs a ride, they can make the phone call to Uber. They'll call the veterans agent or the COA director who will set it up for them. Okay. And so it will say it costs 150 bucks. is that what you're saying? Um, it's $250 for, um, they figure there's an average um, of $13 a ride, so it'll be about 50 to 70 rides. Oh, for the year. I'm thinking that's a lot of money for <laughs> right for a <laughs> for a ride. I might go into the business myself. Yeah. But that 250 is just for the three month trial period, yeah. correct? Now, if it is successful, what are they going to how are they going to raise the, the funds to uh, continue the programs? If they wanted to continue it, um, they'd have to look and see, like the COA, whether they had funds in their grant, or if they were going to raise the money. Um, I know Estelle has had some people that have come forward to contribute to her Veterans Assistance Fund, so she could possibly continue to fund it through that. I think it's a great idea. Mm. I mean, it's... So the appointment is made in advance, obviously, and then this would be to take, like, people to doctor's appointments? Or... Right. Someone that has a doctor's appointment, say, on a Saturday or something when there's not a ride available for them or outside even the the service area of Gatra. 
their mm-hmm. doctor. And so if someone had to go into Boston. Right. Okay. Sounds good. You need a vote? Yeah, vote to authorize uh, the veterans uh, service officer and the COA director to enter into that agreement. So moved. Second. Motion. Motion to second. Any further discussion? Keep us informed, will you? Sure. Let us know how, you, how they're doing. Maybe in 30 days, get back to us and let us know how it's, yep. how it's well, working. It's not going to start until October. Okay, but in 30 days yeah. after it starts. The reason I'm saying that is, let's say they get 30 days into it, and this thing is really popping and working well. You know, we need to figure out a way to keep it Just going. Right, 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 right. You know, I don't want to get 30 <coughs> days into it and say, oh, and by the way, we ran out of money. Right. <laughs> it worked great, but we don't have any money left. We have to... I I'd want to make sure we stay on top of it. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have motion second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Okay. okay, next we have the review and vote amendments to the Cena B memorandum of, of uh, agreement. This um, this was an agreement that was made and was left out of the Cena B memorandum of agreement that came forward before um, due to the um, nature of what the police administrative assistant does and the fire administrative assistant. Um, this proposal um, was to move them from C to D in the grade chart. Um, previously, only the assessor's technician was on that grade chart, and um, it, the belief was that you know this was the work they did was equal to or more than that, and they should be on that. Um, D chart. They they were looking to go up to um, E, but um, there was discussion on that, and uh, the position that's under the E has a little bit more responsibility than uh, those two positions, so um, it wasn't recommended. And um, what we're looking for now is for the board to uh, sign and agree to and sign this. Um, Grade change. You want to have any questions? No, I, I, re I read the information in the charts, and uh, the difference in the grade is, I think it's less than a dollar right. or something like that. Yeah. And it's for, you know, for two people, and especially if it's something that was previously agreed upon but omitted in the typewritten amendment, I see no reason not to approve it. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion to vote to amend the Cena B a memorandum of agreement. So moved. Second. As discussed by the town manager. I'm sorry? As discussed by the town manager. Just to make sure we get something sure. in there. Sure. As presented by the there town manager. There you go. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Present. Got one present. Yeah, I don't know which. I don't know which is favor. A, B, or C. I'm no, not you, voting anyway. You can vote. On. I can. Oh, okay. Aye. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. <laughs> but he's right. You know, you got to check. You gotta I got to sure. check. I got to mm -hmm. dot my eyes. It's just the police and fire administrative secretary. So. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. No clue. Next, uh, anything on, nothing on the old business. Um, just if okay. um, the contracts are in there to sign for one of the unions that you already just. Yeah, we did that already. Yeah. yeah, we were just talking about, when did we, when did we approve uh, that one? What, is that Cena A? Yes. A. Actually, it's not Cena A anymore. It's AFLC. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before, <laughs> work, it's <laughs> before town meeting. Oh, okay. That's what we were talking about. We didn't know if we would be signing it, and then we couldn't yeah, find no, it. No, you approved it before time. They all kind of blend together after a while. When I said that about not being seen A, but being then it started to come back. <laughs> okay, Tom Angel's report. Just an update on the end of the year, as we've done for the last few years, rather than require a vote of the Finance Committee and um, the select Board of Selectmen, we uh, accomplished all the uh, end of year adjustments um, through reserve fund transfers. Um, 
And uh, we, there were reserve fund transfers for the municipal building account of 14,400, um, police department 3,500, fire department 20,000, reserve fund transfer for the street lighting 2,300, and board of health 1,626. And for the most part, we could have handled all this through interdepartmental transfers or transfers from one line item in a department to another line item in the department, but it all means the same anyways, because either this money was gonna be certified as free cash or the money remaining in their budgets will be certified as free cash. So it's just a smoother way to do it. Okay, any questions? No. Any more than that? Um, no. And just to give you an update, um, as Mr. Kimball said, he walked down the pathway uh, to see the, um, I call them the pits that uh, were constructed for the sewage treatment plant expansion. Um, when I went in there and saw those for the first time, I was wondering where they got all the nice material. Yeah, it was nice. That material was there. That's why they picked that site. All nice, nice gravel. It's, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. And by the way, you can't see any of this from the road. No. I, mean, I, I was expecting to be able to look out over you know, some of the pasture land and mm -hmm. see something in the background, it's way out there. Yeah. I mean, it's not, not even visible. So that, the basin part, the infiltration basin part of the work is virtually all done, just some minor um, landscaping things to do. And um, the plant, the work on the plant itself is at about 45%. Um, the original time for the contract was 815 days, and we're 347 days into the project. So um, things are moving along well. There's like 70 people on site every day working on that uh, uh, expansion, and um, things have been going along smoothly. Okay. Is there more um, land available for you ever have to expand out there? This should be, I mean, this this is a- It's huge. Yeah, it's a, it, it takes into account a big expansion of the plant. I don't know if there is, uh, I don't know how much they need, and it all depends how they're gonna expand, but I think this should handle it. And um, the uh, last item I have is the East Main Street. Um, out in front of 274 East Main, beginning next Monday, uh, they'll be repaving. Um, so it was all done. What's that? <coughs> it was all done. They were going to do that this past. They were going to do that this week. Unfortunately, they didn't Good because they it did. rained all yeah. week. <laughs> so uh, uh, it's been rescheduled to next week, um, starting on uh, Monday, and um, hopefully we'll be done in three to four days. But uh, we'll see. The major part of it is where the hill is. That hill is coming down six inches, um, and then the rest is grinding and re repaving and uh, so hopefully uh You're doing anything with the sidewalks nothing the sidewalk is that final yeah that, it's theirs it's nothing to do with us right okay. it's on there That's, yeah is they're that, done is that the final code on there? yeah they did it like four times but they got it right the last time <laughs> <laughs> so one lane will be open um heading as someone said, well, that's east-west. How how is that north-south? As, but heading from towards Easton, that well, East Main toward Easton. Yeah, we'd consider north. That's that's going to be remain open. Correct? Am I right, Brian? <laughs> In the past, it's been opposite. Opposite. Uh, yeah, they've taken the, uh, the right down Leonard Street and around. And okay. Traffic coming from Okay. I have it here. Yeah, you're right. Northbound traffic will be diverted on Leonard Street and around, and uh, everyone coming from Easton will be able to come through all the time. But one lane will remain open all the time. Now, will that be just during the day, or is that 24 hours a day? Uh, just during the day. Yeah. I believe. <laughs> it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Big yeah. yeah. But the assurances are once the weather breaks, it'll only take three or four days. Yeah. You know, I don't want this turned into two weeks or oh, something. No, no, it shouldn't, mm, yeah. it shouldn't you know. be one week. Well, I mean, I don't know if I ask for tickets for Six Flags now or should we wait for Jolly Charlie's? Because I'm telling you right now, 
if they don't get it right this time, we need to do something because I can't imagine that hill, if nobody's ever ridden it, how they're going to level it is beyond me. And, you know, I, I personally don't think they have the right contract to doing it, but no. who well, we got to say? We got to give them a chance to fix it, but we don't have to give them a chance to relieve the money either. Well, you, the money, the, the bond but, money is, is still under our control, right? It is. Just Correct. Remember, just remember that part of it. When they're finished repaving this, are the catch basins all going to be workable? Sometimes. Well, it's just, no, it's just I, I know that one that sticks up six inches. It should be. That's, well, it's that's what's supposed to happen. It's working well, right? It works. <laughs> it's working real well lately. Well, it, it's very uh, obvious when you, if you, if the catch basin's higher than the six inches they're going to low, it's never going to work. Well, that's what I mean. Right. But that one's the, I think that's, that's the problem inch. one, where it's sitting right on top of the cover right now, the great oh, frame. Right. But they could fix it if they flip it upside down and do an inverted drain. They right. could lower that six inches, so but it just depends on if they're smart enough to do that. So, uh, so you're telling me it's not going to get done? I'm not telling them nothing. We are going to watch them, right? Keith, yeah. Keith can be involved. Yes. Okay. Um, and just to remind everyone that um, July 18th at 6:30 in the library will be the public hearing on the East Main Street Route 123 reconstruction project, which will run from Pine Street to um, Leonard Street and involve uh, repaving um, sidewalks, bike lanes, and uh, traffic signalization at the off-ramps. And so that public hearing um, will be held. And at that public hearing, they'll be t talking about traffic management, right-of-way improve um, impacts, um, the construction cost, which right now is set at uh, seven million two hundred thousand, um, the project status, um, right of way issues and easements and takings that'll have to be made, and what rights people that whose property will have takings will have, all all that will be discussed at the public hearing. So, uh, we've put this up on our website um, on the town website, uh, probably under the planning. Um, director so if anyone wants any of the information it's up there uh, now the option of traffic lights on north and south washington they question that because they think by putting the lights at 495 it might break it up so it's going to be a let's wait and let's do the project and wait and see well that'll probably be a discussion that will happen on on tuesday okay if anyone has input on that and that's the 18th at 6 30 mike yes thank you and just um, when we met earlier this week with uh, Wheaton and, and uh, Gatra, and um, they're looking to put a hub on the campus, and so um, they've been working very cooperatively with Gatra, trying to find a location. Um, one of the areas that's being looked at is Howard Street, the far the side of Howard Street down by 140, mm -hmm. looking to see if they could get a cutout down on Howard Street there. So the buses that come from Attleboro, Taunton, and Mansfield, that would be like a, a hub in that area that people could transfer to go the different directions. So uh, they're working on it, see if they can get something that's suitable for uh, everybody. Would, would, would they widen the road there? Because that, in the morning and evening, that backs up all the way past uh, you know, the end of uh, uh, Summer Street at Barrows Road there. The cutout would be on Howard Street in the campus. It yeah. would be out on... Uh, but the buses are still going to have to come through, the, down 140, right? Right. They, <clears throat> they come down that way anyways now. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this just give them a better... We're, we're looking to add one other route, and it would be the route that would go from Taunton through the Miles Standish and our Commerce Center, and then down... Um, from the eastern line down to Wheaton, and then. And, and when uh, President uh, Dano was here, the reason I mentioned the 123, yeah. 140, is thinking that if we could take some of their property on that corner, we could have two lanes of traffic. Which would be fantastic. From Taunton. Yeah, mm. it's, <clears throat> that's a problem area. Open up that whole corner. Oh. And set back, like, like Brad said, set those sidewalks a bit further back, too. Yeah, I'm that's true. Yeah. To, to Mike's comment about that backup, 
Mike, we've been trying for years to try to get the state in here to readjust the lights. Right. Um, what you cannot, <laughs> you cannot, the amount of traffic that we have, the, the, the light sequence is, is approximately five cars they can go through there. Right. All right, that's not enough. It's not enough timing to alleviate traffic in all directions. I think, you know, it needs to be readjusted, but according to, you know, town manager sending a letter to the Mass Highway, they want us to pay for our engineering program to redesign that. I don't feel it's our problem to redesign how they can structure the timing. That should be the state's, yeah. but it's not our lights. We don't own them. If, right. it's not, if we own them, we could have Keith win the box and we, we could readjust it any time we want. But this is our issue that we're having right now is I don't feel as though that we should be paying the money to redesign, engineer the 140 on the timing of the lights. It's common sense. It's just if you come out here and you, you know what's going on during the morning and the afternoon, it can be fixed real simple. Yeah. And, um, but this is it's, well, it's it, a pain. And the fact that the two left turn lights don't go off at the same Correct. time. It's Correct. I just don't feel so the town should be. I, I agree with you, Bob. And, I you think know. it's you know it's a state road, state lights. You, you, you own it. You come yep. out and you pay for it. I think it's been a mess ever since I put it in there. Yeah. One one good positive thing about this new sidewalk by the um, on Library Square is when we're done, if people are coming up the President's House side of, of the Main Street, they'll be able to cross over, go up, and catch the light at the end of Mansfield Ave if they can run fast enough. So, but at least they'll be able to come up that side and not have to go by the church and. And on the other side, so it might relieve some of it, but it's still, it's just gonna be tough to get through. Yeah, it's there. crazy. Even 5 30 in the morning, it's yeah. backed up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyways, I'm anything done. else? Okay, next on the agenda, we have the um, reappointment, oh, no, the appointment of Park Recreation, Park Recreation Coordinator, what we're we talking Yep. Part time coordinator. Nicole, you here? You've been sitting there so patiently, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry to make you wait this long. There's all these great things you're learning about, you know? <laughs> Want to read that for us, Bob? No. Please? <laughs> can't do that one either. No, I can't do that one either. Can't do that one either? <laughs> You'd read it. Uh, well, you can read sorry. it. Sorry. Have nothing Notice the appointment of part and recreation part-time coordinator. I hereby notify the Board of Selectmen that in accordance with the provisions of Article 4, Section 2B of the Norton Charter, acting in my capacity as appointing authority, I've appointed the following individual as park recreation part-time coordinator, Nicole Cuneo. 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 Said appointment was made on July 6, 2017, in accordance with the provisions of the Norton Charter, and will be effective July 21, 2017, unless the Board of Selectmen vote to accept or reject the appointment prior to that date. I specifically request the Board's acceptance of this appointment with an effective date of July 17th, 2017, uh, from Town Manager Michael D. Units. Do have a motion? So moved. Second. Nicole, you want to come up? Come on. Come on up to the hall. <laughs> yeah. When uh, Nicole's coming up, if I can just tell you, um, Nicole is a graduate of uh, Norton High School and Newberry College. Um, she's been very involved in youth sports. In spoke with Nicole, she had a good vision of where she would see recreation moving in the, uh, in the future. And her references, um, they all spoke highly about her and her skills um, on working with people. And Nicole is also an interior designer, and she designed the town hall interior design work. <laughs> no, no, she I don't want to take credit for that. Place. Wait, wait yeah. a minute. <laughs> I designed it. It's not you. Thank <laughs> <laughs> God. The, um, I mean, this is a very important position. You know that you grew up yeah. here, right? So yep. you know how how important it is for us to have an active recreation yeah. program. I think we all have a vision of what we'd like to see. In the very near future, we'd like to see a full-time position. With mm -hmm. a question. Um, and not only that, but a department that can almost self-fund itself. Yep. There are so many programs out there that we can offer that we don't have to, we don't have to host people for it, that they can, they can, we can raise enough money to keep subsidizing things as we go. Yeah. We had a very active recreation committee 20 years ago. Um, we had a full-time person. Mm -hmm. And you know, to expect you to do that kind of work as part-time is 
unrealistic and we, we can't expect that from you. But I think it's our goal in the future to make sure this position is full time and we can get uh, year round programs for everybody. Yeah. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't matter what age they are, yeah. you know, just to get them out there. And we've been uh, actually getting some information from neighboring communities to get an idea of what their full time programs are. And they're doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah, they are. They really are. And we're not. Uh, in addition to that, we have to start rebuilding your commission so you have some help, yep. you know, some guidance and help from, mm -hmm. from them. So hopefully we can continue to find people to step up and help us with that program also. Because it can't be one person doing it all. No. <laughs> no, no. But I am looking forward to it, and I thank you guys for giving me this opportunity. Well, well, thank you for volunteering. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Anybody? Anything? I think she'll do a good job. She's very she's energetic, good. you know, um, for what she does. Are you going to talk? I, no, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm voting for <laughs> her. Thanks for calling her, me but energetic. I, I, know <laughs> she's was a, nice. I know she's very energetic. and uh, That's good. I think she'll do a good job. Well, we, need, we need something like that. So uh, I guess my final comment would be we're here to help you. We really are. We want to support you. Thank you. Anything we can to help you. Thank you. Uh, we need to rebuild the programs again and get it up and running. Uh, there are a couple of real critical ones we're worried, very worried about yep. coming up, the uh, Halloween parade and yep. um, the... Um, Lighting of the Common. Lighting of the Common. Lighting of the Common. So, uh, again, uh, well, we're here to help you with that. Absolutely. In, uh, in any way we can, so... Um, Thank if you. If I may, yeah. we tend to get involved with so many different things that if we're neglecting you, you have to just get, get a hold of Mike and get put on... Yeah. A warrant any time okay. that you need our help. Already. Because uh, we, we go off in tangents. You have, sometimes we have to be focused more like children than, <laughs> <laughs> than, I, than my grandkids. But no, it, we, we won't, can't help and won't help unless you ask. Absolutely. But, but we, you got it. we definitely want you to ask. Okay. And in, in your early days, too, if you want to come back, you know, in a month from now and let us know what you're doing and, okay. you know, what you need and, you know, keep us informed. We'll be glad to help you. All right, I will. You'll have Mike, you know, put you on the agenda. Okay. See if we can help you out. Who's alarm? Uh, I thought it was mine. I don't I'm think it is. Good luck. <laughs> That's off now. Okay. I hope yeah. so. Battery just died. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, it was, I don't know if it was mine. I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Anything else? Congratulations. Thank, thank you, you very you. much. Thanks, guys. Keep us informed. I will. Okay. Um, before, and I just wanted to thank Kayla Sicard, who uh, came to me um, on her own. Kayla is the supervisor down at the pool. Yeah. And w when Kayla knew that uh, the director was leaving and there would be a gap in between directors, she came and uh, offered uh, to fill in and do her job down there as well as handle any any uh, calls up upstairs and uh, accounts payable payroll um, and I want to thank her very she's very professional still in college and uh, she was very professional and was a big help and I wanted to thank her for coming forward and offering her assistance That's great yeah it's terrific if I made it did I don't, we I don't, only have somebody in Dennis <laughs> did we vote you didn't I didn't think so. Did they vote or not? No. Nope. Well, we we uh, motion in a second, but we did not vote. So the um, we have a motion in a second to appoint um, Nicole Cuneo to the position of Park and Recreation Part-Time Coordinator. We have a motion and second already on the table. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Present. Opposed? Unanimous. One abstention. We have three three in favor, one abstention. Sorry. Okay. okay, we have a reappointment of Lori Flusher to the council, cultural council. Yep, she, uh, Lori has said, said that she wanted to be reappointed and this would be her second term. It's kind of a crazy thing. It is, they yeah. only let you have two terms. That's on. it, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, she a motion to reappoint Lori Flusher to the cultural council. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Recommends report and mail. Mr. Salvo. I don't have anything to show. Mr. Bramwell. No report, no mail. No report, no mail. I got a couple. 
Um, first of all, I want to thank, reach out and thank the, this is, I'm changing hats now, so. On behalf of the Gold Star Committee, uh, we received a um, donation <coughs> from Lucio and John Drain. Uh, she had a yard sale at the property and she promised to make a donation to us to help us put, improve the plantings on the back end of the front memorial. Because when those trucks are parked out back, I guess John uh, used, to, used to mention it quite often as he was driving by how he hated to see those vehicles behind there with all the beautiful landscaping in the front. So they've made a, a very generous donation of $1,500 to Gold Star Committee. And we're gonna use that money to put up a natural fence. We're gonna use planting, so we're not gonna put up a fence, but nice. we're gonna put up a buffer in the back to, nice. to make it look uh, like it ends there, which it won't, but, yeah. and still allow people to be able to come in from the back, so. Uh, but I wanna thank, personally thank uh, Lucille for their, for, for her, and her sons for their donor generation. They don't, their uh, generous donation. It's been um, well received and we definitely will use it. And we'll, we'll make the best of it, best we can. How's the free water working, by the way? Free water, it's working much better. I'm not getting any complaints. And nice, no everything's wet. Right. turn off my meters. <laughs> the only thing we have to do is we have to figure out a way to protect that wellhead and you know put some more boulders around it. And when we do the plantings, we want to try to kind of figure that into it. You know, so we can cover that up the best we can. I was at the um, town clerk's office tonight, and for this has been a number of times I've been there, and I've had to listen to people coming into town hall to pay their water bill. <clears throat> and I also hear about how they, 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 when they go down there, there's either no one there to take their money or they're told that they have to um, mail a drop box or they can't take cash and all this other stuff. And it's just mind boggling to me that as a town agency, we can't figure out a way to, to assist these people who wanna pay their bill. That's what they're doing, they're trying to pay their bill. So I would like to ask Mr. Units to work with the superintendent and the uh, collector to figure out a way that if somebody comes into this town hall, first of all, you have to remember where the town, the water department is now. So if you don't know where it is, you're never going to find it. It's not like it's prominently, you know, located. It's, it's way out in the middle of nowhere. Um, something that when they did build a new facility, I was opposed to putting offices out there. I felt the offices should have been here. Here. Yep. Centralized with the rest of the town. I agree. But they're, but they're out there now, and there's not much we can do about that. Um, but we have to come up with a plan on how this can work. If I want to come in here and I want to pay my water bill, I shouldn't have to get the run around. And I know the girls down there are taking a lot of heat. It's, it's not their fault. They're, they're, they're just saying, we can't take your money. And that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. So we need to come up with a plan. Maybe you can come back to us and get an idea of how we can make this work. And I don't want to hear about the drop box. There are people like myself that still come in and still pay cash, you know, for stuff that we buy. And we have to figure it out. And we can't continue to turn ratepayers away because we, we're not, it's not convenient for us. We have to figure out a way to make it mm -hmm. convenient for people to pay their damn bill. Right. So. But I also heard when people did pay, that they would put the money, they would put that money in the box and send it all the way to Reading, wherever it goes, anyways. I've heard that. I've heard that from people. I don't know why, but that's kind of a little bit, yeah, out there. Why would you not record it? And well, I know why, but maybe you can find out. No, we, I, I guess we need. We need to find out how it works first and how we can fix it. But it's not working right now. So, mm. and again, that lady came to the window tonight. She was like, she was incredulous. She's like, <laughs> you, you can't take my money, right? You know, I mean, it's like, and unfortunately, the ladies have to have to hear it, and it's not not fair to them either. So, if we can get some information on that, I think it's something we need to. Jim, I don't have a problem with the with the garage facility being where it is location. I do have a problem with day to day operations being in the woods. 
because on an average, people don't even know where it is, like you just said, and to go there and not be able to, to conduct business is, a, is another thing. Where it be, every place I know, I've been to in my career, in my business, I've always seen the water and highway be in conjunction within walking distance to each other. But and, I, and I do believe that if we build, when and if, if we build a new town hall, every department should be under one roof. Yeah. And that includes them too. Yep. We need to have centralized place where people can go and do their business. Conduct the business, yeah. As best we can. Right. Maybe two buildings, but at least they're in the same, like I say, the same proximity. Very important that we figure out a way to do that. Also, I don't want to keep bringing this up, but I do want to talk about these reserve accounts before September comes around and we're not, we're not talking about, you know, putting money aside for future buildings and before we certify, we after we get the certified amount of money, we should figure out what percentage we want to put into separate accounts prior to any money being spent for whatever reason. And we have to come up with some uh, guidelines on how we want to do that too. So we'll have to talk more about that. But yeah. on the next agenda, I think we need to continue talking about it, Mike, as much as we can. And at some point, we need to have that joint meeting between FinCom, school committee, and board of selectmen. Probably like we said, we said about early September. Yeah. Or something. I think that's all I have. Mr. Chairman, I apologize. I actually do have something. Um, yep. I, I received a, a couple um, uh, messages yesterday morning uh, regarding the Xfinity traffic. Okay. Again, I guess it was an all-day concert and people were jammed up. Uh, on one, uh, 140 going towards uh, Mansfield. Um, and it was, uh, you know, I think people are getting, becoming more and more frustrated with the situation, uh, the traffic pattern there. And in the, in the, uh, all the years I've lived in Norton, I never really seen the problems as bad as they are this year. Um, so I did say I would bring it up. I don't know if it's, I think it's completely outside of our control as Mansfield is controlling the flow there, aren't they? No, actually, we, our police chief and our town manager have been working with Jeff Mann and Mansfield to okay. come up with ways to make this work. And it's, I think someone brought it up earlier about we need more signage. That, yeah. That's what we really need. We need to keep people informed as to how how that traffic's working. It's, and I you know I complained because I came off the highway, we're told at ten thirty. Yeah. Is when they shut down the end of Reservoir Street. Eight thirty five, eight thirty seven I came off figuring I just gonna pop down in Reservoir Street. It was already blocked off. Yeah. I mean I had to go around. So I understand people's frustration. You know, we have to be consistent on the time we close it and also figure out a way that people who live in that area and have the right yeah. to go home. Yeah, well, or get to work in the morning. Yeah. And it's, um, it was a left-hand turn off of 140 into the, uh, into the Great Woods. Hmm. So coming from Norton, taking a left into the venue, it just backed up 140 considerably. How are we doing with it? <laughs> well, that I know Jeff's working real hard. Jeff Mann's working hard to, to make it right, but you know he's. It's like this one. Now here's a perfect example. It's an all-day event. They're coming and going all right. the time. I mean, how do you how do you control it? I, I think part of the issue, um, as you said, well, the 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 hard thing is to say. It's 10:30 at night that you close it because what it is is they close that road off 30 minutes before the end of a concert. So they have they have concerts that end earlier. They're going to close the road earlier. I think what the problem is is that they should have signage, digital signs out on 140 and on 495 two days before that happens, letting people know that on Turn restrictions. July 14th at 830 Reservoir Street in Norton is going to be closed. 140 is going to be closed. Seek alternate routes. But why they, can't we do that? They should be doing that. Why can't we that's, do that? Well, that's what we got to tell them to. So would you work with Chief Clark yeah. and try to figure out a way? My wife yeah, had a very July. good point. She said, look, if I drive by the Xfinity, I see a sign out front, which they don't have, that says, coming Wednesday, so-and-so. Right. Yeah. You know there's a concert. Right, right now, there, there's nothing out on the street to tell you when the next concert's going to be. Yeah. You know, and you know you have brains enough to say, right. you know what, there is a concert coming up. I'll have to remember not to come this way Wednesday. <laughs> Why don't they have a signboard right. out in front of the right. facility? Right, right, even if they did that. 
Yeah. Because I know someone ta called. I'm talking about a permanent. Right. Yeah. Right. Nice pylon With, sign. Yeah, the dates right. of the next three events. Let's yeah. yeah. Right. So, dates. Yeah. They could. Dates and time. They could put the whole year, yeah. the whole summer up there. What is it? Right. It's. Okay. That's it. Yeah. But I hear Peter. I mean, uh, unfortunately, I know people are upset with the closing of Reservoir, and that's <coughs> Mass Highway and in, in Mansfield have worked out. That's in Mansfield. That's not in Norton. Right. And you know, we've expressed our concerns, but there isn't that much we can do. But at least if people knew in advance right. that it was going to be closed, they they'd make plans. And I think that's a great idea that you had. There should be a sign out front. Yeah. Let's people know yeah. when the concerts are going to be. Why would they not have that? I, I don't know. I, that's always. I mean, picture the new casino up the hill. Right. I mean, outside they got a sign out there when they have events on the. Right. Maybe the town didn't allow it. Well, at the time. I have to find out. I don't, I don't think. Why would they not have one? I don't know. Coming events. Yeah. At least you'd know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because honestly, none of us know. I mean, we're not, we're not going to a concert. I don't know when the next concert's going to be. Right. They had a message board out there saying, at least they could warn people the days they don't have concerts, that, you know, on certain, certain night, you know, that streets yeah. can't take a left. Yeah. People get in their heads when they go by, they can read it. Right, right. right. You know. I think that's worth looking into. Okay. Are there any other trouble? Anything else? That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Let's get all these warrants and minutes done. Mr. Salvo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Senate would like to approve the bi-weekly payroll for the period ending June 30th, 2017. Warrant number 79, dated June 30th, 2017. In the amount of $508,868.85. Second. Motion to second on warrant number 79. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Selva? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to approve the bill warrant number 80, dated June 30th, 2017, in the amount of $171,727.46. Second. A motion and second on warrant number 80 for a discussion. Send that all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to approve physical year 18 payroll, warrant number PR1 for the period ending July 1st, 2017, in the amount of $92,235.20. Second. I have a motion and second. I'm going to assume, Mr. Town Manager, that payroll one uh, accounts payable one. These are new. Are we using, why are we using these new terminologies? What are you talking about? See, we used to just say warrant number. Now it's warrant PR1, warrant AP1, warrant AP2. That, that's because. Um, it was a split payroll week, so that's why. I'm just curious. I mean, I yeah. no, it looks like it looks like James has changed. Yeah, I the think so. practice. Yeah, I think he's changed the way he actually. That way he, he can. He knows he one's accounts payable. And one's the minute, payable. <coughs> the minute he looks at it, he knows. Yeah. What the warrants for? I mean, I don't have a problem. I'm just. Twenty years we've been doing <laughs> we've been doing it the other way. I just think we probably should you know mention that the, there there is a change here. Yeah. No, I saw it earlier, and I just yeah. He's, Makes it quicker for him to identify it. Okay. And Mr. Chairman, I'd like to prove physically year 18 invoice warrant AP1. It's not like I'm a dispatcher for some LA police department here. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Dated July 6, 2017, the amount of $794,377.04. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Did we approve PR1? I was going to say, I don't think we voted that. <clears throat> Motion to approve PR1. For the amount of $92,235.20. I don't remember. I don't think we voted. We didn't. No. I did read it, but. Yeah, yeah we have motion second, but motion no. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we got that one. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'd like to this approve. New technology. <laughs> I'd like to approve. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'd like to approve E, approve uh, physical 18 invoice warrant number AP2, Dated July 13, 2017, in the amount of $432,957.33. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. But that one's right anyway. Okay. Okay, we have two sets of minutes. Uh, March 20, uh, 30, 2017, which was an executive session. 
I mean, June 29, 2017. Should I entertain a motion to approve as written? So moved. Uh, did one alteration to sure. June 29? Yep. Uh, I'm not in the roll call. Oh, you're not? No. Okay. I'm in the minutes, but not in the roll call. Okay, sure. Okay. So with that amendment, is there any other yeah. discussion, changes, deletions? You were here. I'll vote for you on that one. I know I saw you. <laughs> and, I think we actually have to vote them separately because I have to abstain from March 30. I don't think it matters that much. Okay. One way or the other. You can if you want to. So, okay, let's move the minutes of March 30th, 2017 executive session as written. Motion second. second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And one abstain. Abstain. Three, three in favor, one abstention. Then we'll approve the minutes of June 29th, 2017, with Motion. the corrections uh, that uh, Mr. Flaherty is here and as written. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Got that one straight. Next meeting agenda is July 27th. Uh, we have the fall time meeting discussion on the warrant. I still want to talk about that, those new accounts on that. At that meeting, actually, one new account, but new procedure of uh, deli uh, s suggesting a percentage of free cash be free cash so, uh, deposited in each. Yep. Anything else? I might not be here, Mr. Chairman, on the 27th. Okay. I had to get initiated into the Elks Club. Okay. <laughs> I missed the last one. If anyone has anything they want to add to the agenda, just hopefully to give them the call. Okay. No executive session. Nope. Chair, maintain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you, Shane.